This is Duke University. DOE has been and continues to be the largest funder of clean energy technologies, especially in the R&D space. The thought was that it would be best to have a single point of contact for the private sector industry, especially with a dual mission. And the dual mission would be firstly to have an entity, namely the Clean Energy Investment Center, that could develop and design and develop new mechanisms of financing so that we could entice private sector capital into clean energy R&D. And secondly, be able to provide the resources that currently are seen as fill in the gaps or fill in the blanks as far as the private sector or investors are concerned. Today, the biggest barriers in uh, financing of clean energy technologies Everybody talks about the need for patience capital and the need for investors to have a vision or a longer time horizon when investing in early stage uh, clean energy technologies and the need for much more capital than was envisioned earlier. But that is just one piece of the puzzle here. There are various other challenges. I would say that investors are not only investing in technology, the first and I would say the predominant aspect that investors look at when they're investing is the team. So we need to make sure that the entrepreneur, the team are world-class teams that are put in front of investors. So that definitely is a huge challenge. The second one would be investors look at pain points. You know, what's the pain point in the technology that could be addressed by a team and that would lead to a larger addressable market. I mean, you could start off with a smaller island or niche market, but there should be a larger market at the end of the road and the market adoption rate could be impacted. So the need to solve pain points is a very critical one. And that to me is a challenge. And the third one is the absence of a robust supply chain. Not many folks talk about the supply chain, but if you look at the scale up, if you look at going from uh, R&D to engineering, from engineering to uh, field and from field to production, the lack of a robust supply chain that can s provide components, that can provide materials at all of these stages is a huge challenge. So the combination of these four factors definitely contribute a challenge to financing of clean energy technologies. In terms of uh, the promising areas for uh, promising technologies for clean tech, I would say that's not a short answer by any means. Uh, you know, everyone talks about storage or energy storage. And given that uh, solar and wind definitely are by far the most preferred technologies uh, in terms of deployment as far as clean energy is concerned, and these uh, both these technologies definitely have the challenge of working in a certain part of the day and not being able to be very efficiently used for the remainder of the day. So you need significant storage or energy storage where energy can be stored and used when the sun is not available or the solar panel is not very efficient, similarly with wind. So there are various technologies within energy storage that are being looked at and by looked at by research institutes, by universities as well as companies, batteries for example. Within batteries there are various types of chemistries, lithium, flow batteries, nickel, iron, etc. etc. So uh, batteries is one, then compressed air, uh, pumped hydro, so these are all forms of uh, energy storage. And so that uh, definitely is a promising technology and uh, there's a lot of work going on, as I said earlier. Then I'm a big fan of what I call cross-cutting materials. And these would be materials that would have a play not only in batteries, for example, but that would have a play in other 
technologies within clean energy, but go beyond clean energy, they could definitely have some significance in other industries, in other verticals, for example, automotive and uh, consumer electronics and pharmaceuticals. Uh, Catalyst, for example, that, that could be used in the oil and gas industry. And the reason I feel that these cross-cutting materials or advanced materials definitely are promising is because at different stages of development and performance of these uh, cross-cutting materials, they could be making money, they could be generating revenue and profit for various industries. And that would be very attractive for investors who are looking at possibly staging their exits or staging their, the return on their investments in these technologies. So moving away from uh, cross-cutting materials to, uh, I would say, microgrid. You know, microgrid is another area which has got the attention of investors, got the attention of the public sector, as well as of startups and larger companies. And within microgrid, you have various components. You have the generation component, you definitely have the storage component. And within generation, you could have solar, you could have wind, you could have nuclear, you could have fuel cells. And storage, as I talked earlier, there are various ways to store energy. But the key aspect of microgrid in terms of technology innovation is how do we have these components interface with each other? How do we have these components talk to each other so that A, their size is optimized, and that would relate to a reduced capex, so the cost would be optimized, and how their performance and output is optimized, and that would again reduce the opex. And so in the end, the levelized cost of energy, or LCOE, would be optimized or reduced.